Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Professor Mukesh Barwa, head of the Department of Management Studies. Uh, so far, in this meeting, around 225 people have joined. And we have with us Professor A.K. Chaturvedi, Director of IIT Roorkee as well. So, sir, at the outset, I would like to thank you for agreeing to deliver the inaugural session of Professor C.K. Pallad Endowment Lecture Series. As many of you would be aware, Professor C.K. Pallad, he was a professor of corporate strategy at University of Michigan, his name was School of Business. His, full, his, his name is Koyamtur Krishna Rao Prasad. He was actually born in Koyamtur, Tamil Nadu. He did his BSc degree in physics from Lala College, Chennai. He did MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. And then later on, he went to Harvard Business School to pursue PhD. And his doctoral thesis was on multinational management. He completed PhD in two and a half years time. After completing PhD, Professor C.K. Pralat joined back I am Ahmedabad as a faculty member. Professor C.K. Pralat has authored several books. Some of the books are The Core Competence of the Corporation, The Fortune at the Bottom of the Pyramid, The New Age of Innovation. He has received several honors and awards. Some of them are Lal Bahadur Shastri Award for Contribution to Management and Public Administration, presented by President of India in 1999. He received Padma Bhushan in 2009. In 2009, he has named the world's most influential business thinker on the thinkers50.com list. Now I request Professor A.K. Chaturvedi, Director IIT Roorkee, to welcome Dr. K.V. Subramanian. So it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Krishnamurti Subramanian to the inaugural edition of the C.K. Prahlad Memorial Lecture at IIT Roorkee in the Department of Management Studies. Uh, this lecture series exist in every department. That means every department has named it after some iconic figure, uh, whether from the department itself or if it is a new department like Department of Management Studies, they have chosen a national icon after whom they have named the lecture series. The purpose of the lecture series is, of course, that we bring outstanding people like Dr. Ashimurthy Subramaniam to the campus. And when they come to the campus, then they see the faculty intermingle with the students. Also see whatever good things are happening in society. And some of this person gets carried back. But unfortunately, due to COVID-19, this part of the lecture series is not possible because uh, we are unable to have Dr. Subramaniam in the campus. But at, at the same time, we are very thankful that he could spare one hour during this very busy schedule to be with us. Personally, I was looking forward to his visit. And the reason is not far to uh, fathom, because uh, when I looked at his CV, uh, it turned out that both he and myself have studied from the same department in the same discipline. And in fact, uh, when he was an undergraduate student, possibly he was a PhD student doing some TA ship for his labs. So I was hoping that we would spend some time together when he visits. But today it is not happening. Dr. Krishnamurti, I hope you will find some time later to visit us after this lecture. So with these brief words, I would like to uh, conclude my address. And we all look forward to hearing to Dr. Krishnamurti, Krishnamurti Subramaniam. So, so before Dr. Subramaniam starts his lecture, let me read out his brief CV. So today we have with us an outstanding personality of the country, Dr. Subramanian. As all of us are aware that COVID has affected not only Indian economy, but world's economy. One of the projections of World Bank is that the world economy will shrink by 5.2% in this fiscal year. And we also know that during COVID, most of the 
supply chains are under pressures all most of the jobs are cut the educational institutions are shut and things are not looking good at this point in time but i hope that all of us would revive very soon and our economy would revive even faster than other emerging economies so before i hand over this session to professor krishnamurthy in brief let me tell you that professor krishnamurthy is the chief economic advisor to the government of india he is a leading expert on economic policy banking and corporate governance a phd from chicago booth and top ranking iit i am alumnus he authored the path breaking economic survey that comments ethical wealth creation for a prosperous india by integrating india's rich economic and spiritual heritage with modern economic ideas he educates ethical wealth creation through a marriage of invisible hand of market with hand of trust his idea of thalinomics what a common person pays for a vegetarian or non vegetarian thali has been acclaimed as indian big mac index the 2019 economic survey again authored by dr subramanian laid out the strategic blueprint for india to become 5 trillion dollar economy by generating a virtuous cycle where pri private investment wage and employment growth as well as consumption feed into each other dr subramanian is on leave from prestigious indian school of business where he is a professor of finance he has served a, on several expert committees including pj nayak committee on government of bank for reserve bank of india his research in banking law and finance innovation and economic growth and corporate governance is published in several top rated journals like the bureau of financial studies the journal of financial and quantitative analysis and so on even while he is still earning his mba and phd he produced award winning work dr subramanian's phd dissertation on the evin marian kaufman foundation dissertation fellowship which recognizes the top 15 phd dissertations across all discipline every year he holds a bachelor degree in electrical engineering from iit kanpur one of india's leading engineering schools in previous academic roles dr subramanian served as a finance faculty at oijeta business school at emory university us he has produced several phd students and his scholars are faculty at top b schools of the world including mit kellogg berkeley and so on now i would request dr subramanian to start his lecture sir after 30 to 40 minutes of your lecturing we will have q a session all the questions would be asked by our moderator swati agrawal and uh, After that, we'll have both of them. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Very good morning. Um, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Very much. So, thanks a lot, Professor Barua, for those kind words. Um, let me say, I'm quite humbled to be delivering the inaugural uh, C.K. Prahlad lecture. As um, we all recognize you know all of all of of us who actually worked in uh, in the area of management ck prahlad was indeed a, a huge visionary um and some of his ideas are quite relevant even in you know in today's india especially when we think about uh, atmanirbhar bharat uh, his idea of the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid uh, which is uh in some sense was his magnum opus in terms of the quality of the ideas that he uh you talked about uh is quite relevant because indian firms um if you look at a lot of our consumption typically 
Indian firms have created products and services primarily catering to the top 25-30% of the demographic in terms of income. Uh, yet, you know, a population of um, almost uh, 137 crore people. Um, and so products and services that can be created for the bottom of the pyramid um, can really be Uh, we all recognize that Atmanirbhar uh, is, you know, implies self-reliance, not self-sufficiency. Um, you know, and, and a very good example of uh, C.K. Prahalad's idea is seen when we go to, you know, to villages and towns in India. You go to a pawn shop, you can, you know, can get a shampoo sachet. Um, you know, 20, 25 years back, if you wanted to buy shampoo, if you're a poor person, wanted to actually get a shampoo you could only get it in those big bottles and a typical poor person would not have the cash to be able to you know uh, to to uh, to be able to buy such a large bottle of shampoo and so the fmcg companies came up with basically this idea of you know building it into sachets and thereby um, utilizing the fact that the poor also want to consume the same products and services that those at the top of the pyramid consume and so this is a very good exemplification of C.K. Prahlad's idea of uh, fortune at the bottom, of the bottom of the pyramid. So I must say I'm extremely privileged to be delivering the inaugural lecture in, in the memory of someone who was so known for uh, path-breaking ideas. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's something which all of us can take a lot of inspiration from. Uh, what I want to briefly talk about and uh, by the way, uh, Professor Baru, I'm not like I'm not going to be speaking for 40 minutes. I'll uh, try and keep it shorter, maybe 15, 20 minutes at at the maximum, um, and nice. then nice. I will uh, I'll try and take more questions. Um, what I do want to focus on, because you know a lot of our um, students are are you know those who are participating are from must must be from management backgrounds. Um, I will, I will, you know, go back about, you know, a little more than some, some, you know, a little bit more than th two decades um, to my own undergraduate days. And uh, one of the things that um, used to, you know, baffle me about many of my peers was how everybody wanted to leave India and, and, and go and settle, settle in the United States. Uh, some of us who were more um, attuned to staying back in India would call these friends of ours NRAs, um, NRA for non-resident Americans. Um, so these were people who basically wanted to spend their four years, you know, acquiring the engineering degree and then go and settle, settle abroad. Um, the, the reason I actually uh, bring this, this, this particular incident up is because um, Many of us during our own school days and maybe even our parents and our, you know, grandparents generations have grown up thinking that, you know, as, at, at, at least in the field of economics, in the field of, uh, you know, management, etc. Uh, India did not rank really well in the committee of nations that most of the ideas uh, relating to economics and, uh, you know, um, and management, etc., have come primarily from the Western world. Uh, that's the thought, and you know that's something which um, many of us uh, grew up as well. Uh, but turns out, that, you know, that is not really true. While it, you know, while th there is no question that a lot of modern economic thought originates from, you know, from from some of the work of Adam Smith and 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 uh, people, you know, uh, thereafter. Um, in India, we've had a, you know, a, a wealth of economic thinking as well. If we, you know, if we go and read the read the literature, and when I say literature, literature um, implies anything that is in the written word. Um, so literature does not include does not include only the kind of journals that uh, Professor. Bakshi was uh, talking about review of financial studies or a journal of finance or a journal of financial economics that of course is literature no doubt but even anything that is written is actually forms part of literature so 
Arthashastra by Kautilya is as much literature. Uh, Tirukkural written by Saint Tiruvalluvar, you know, in the, in the south is as much literature. Um, you know, the Upanishads are also literature. You know, we can have um, debate about whether these are these have any religious connotations or not. But the fact that they are written word implies that they also are part of literature. And it therefore behooves every Indian student uh, of management and economics to also learn the, um, you know, to, to, to learn the literature that we have inherited. Um, and that is what I set out to, to do, um, you know, when, when I was in, in the process of writing the economic survey, um, you know, for the economic survey that got published in, in January this year. Uh, so, uh, apart from reading Arthashastra, you know, Kaut of Kautilya, by the way, this is just a side comment. Most people think about Kautilya as the Indian Machiavelli, um, which is not quite true because, um, and, and, you know, we oftentimes we colloquially use this word Chanakyaniti whenever you want to actually do something that is not quite straightforward. It's that say, saying in Hindi, um, so, Tedi Anguli is what people think, typically think about Chanakiniti. Um, but that's a very limited conception of, of Chanakya. Um, Chanakya, you know, wrote the Artha Shastra, and those of you who understand Hindi or Sanskrit would, would, would appreciate Arth means basically economic um, prosperity. Uh, and it's one of the four uh, noble goals that humankind is expected to perceive, uh, you know, to, 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 to uh, pursue um, as part of, as you know, as a human birth, dharma, earth, kama, moksha. And earth is basically the economic, uh, you know, prosperity. And so, uh, as the name itself suggests, this is a shastra, it's basically a treatise on how to become prosperous, whether it's for an individual or for a nation. If we go and look at some of the research that's been done by George Madison, um, and this is mentioned in the in in the first chapter of the economic survey. It's the first chart. If you look at the sh contribution to world GDP among different you know by by different countries for three quarters of known economic history. In other words, till about 1750 AD. Till about 1750 AD, India contributed almost one third, or sometimes more, of the entire world's GDP. Now, such dominance, which is three quarters of known economic history, uh, such dominance does not happen just by pure accident. Such dominance happens only through design. And the design is what has been covered in detail in many, many, many uh, you know, uh, um, parts of, of the traditional literature. Arthashastra is, you know, by Kautilya is one of those um, important treatises. Uh, in down south, the um, Tirukkural, you know, uh, which is which is written by Saint Tiruvalluvar, um, also has as you know similar ideas. Um, so I would I would strongly urge uh, you know all the students um, uh, of management disciplines to learn the learn modern economic tools for sure, but at the same time also uh, go and you know learn about the ideas. Um, that are that that were advocated by our by our earlier thinkers because I can really foresee a lot of research ideas that can that can come come together by taking those ideas that were um, advocated in the you know in an Arthashastra or in a you know um, in in a in a, in a Tirukkural, taking that and applying it you know and and using uh, modern economic methods those can lead to very good research studies. So it's a good opportunity for many people to, uh, especially PhD students or, or, or scholars, uh, research scholars here, to actually pursue those, those ideas. So to come back to what I was saying, the reason India was able to dominate the world economy for three quarters of known economic history was, it wasn't an accident, it was because we enabled the marriage of two key you know, aspects. One is the invisible hand of markets. So while Adam Smith is credited with, uh, you know, with, with this expression, invisible hand of markets, um, and you know, um, Kautilya may not have used this particular 
wording or ni neither did tiruvalluvar use this wording but the idea that you know uh, that that hitting uh, markets is the easiest way to generate prosperity was very much there in the you know in the so one of the key things that we talked about in the economic survey which is relevant for policy making today is to reduce government intervention in the economy now if there is a there is a history to this government intervention that we've had since the uh, since independence we followed the socialistic model for about uh, five decades and uh, with within the socialistic model therefore uh, we indulged in a lot of government intervention which really um, you know uh, shackles uh, shackles economic enterprise and thereby does not generate enough prosperity so one of the key things that india needs to do to be able to create wealth is firstly enable markets at the same time not think about wealth as a as as a as a um, you know inevitable ill um, or a as a, as a necessary evil uh, wealth needs to be thought about as 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 uh, something that is worth pursuing as you know as i was saying earlier as well dharma arth kam moksha is actually talked about as the four hu noble human pursuits of which arth is indeed a, a, a noble human pursuit um, but it needs to be done in an ethical manner and this is where ethical wealth creation becomes important in other words not you know if, if wealth is created by willfully defaulting so you basically you know take money from a bank and you you know and you don't repay even though you have the ability to repay that is not ethical wealth wealth creation you know ethical wealth creation you know can be done by for instance the ideas that ck prahlad advocated which is you know identify opportunities at the bottom of the pyramid provide them products and services that they indeed are are you know are hungry for and thereby create wealth in the process so the first part is the hand of market the second key part is also the hand of trust so it's the marriage of the hand of markets with the hand of trust that is what is really critical for ethical wealth wealth creation and you know now even western economies are recognizing the role of the of trust in in, a, in an economy the global financial crisis um, you know uh, highlighted this I, i'm fortunate that my one of my phd advisors luigi zingales um, has done a lot of work in showing that the global financial crisis was primarily a failure of trust in the in the economy um, now why is trust important because across time you know if philosophers have always thought about how do we create the incentive alignment between between private greed and social good so how do you make sure that private greed what a individual person wants to do is something that enables society benefits society as well which is not the case when somebody is you know a factory is let's say producing products by polluting the river in that case private greed is actually harming social good so um, trust is important actually to enable you know private greed in, in, is benefiting social good and that's something which um, you know our our ancient thinkers have highlighted which the uh, you know which which uh, uh, the the western world is also now starting to recognize the covid crisis has also now highlighted the importance of you know importance of um, and and the limitations of markets importance of trust in the economy you know uh, gro growing uh, e the economy or to undertaking economic development while respecting the planet um, many of you would have i think especially those who might have been in roorkee would have been able to see uh, you know the, the the for instance the ganges in in varanasi or in haridwar you know such pure water that it, it, the water had become portable during the lockdown um, which basically provides illustration of how the ganges you know the the, the water there has become polluted primarily because of industrial effluents coming into the into into uh, you know the, the the river so which illustrates some of the the, the problems with you know with private greed uh, overcoming overcoming social good so um, the covid crisis has also highlighted how uh, markets may not function fully and i think this is important to understand that markets work very well 90 to 95% of the time 
but they may not work 5% of the time like like you know times like these for instance if markets work perfectly there would be no shortage of uh, masks there wouldn't have been any short shortage of of ppe protective equipment um, you know of ventilators etc because there would have been some entrepreneur who would have actually produced these anticipating you know a, a situation like this albeit with a if, if it happens with a small probability so um, this is something which is really um, you know um, also highlighting the role of role of markets um, that the limitations of market so the global financial crisis together with the covid crisis now highlights the role for what i think is dharmic capitalism you know which can thereby encourage ethical wealth creations so there's a very symbiotic relationship between dharmic capitalism and you know uh, those of us who are here will understand that dharma you know as a as one of the other key you know um, noble pursuits as i said dharma arth kaam moksha so dharm is you know is a very very profound sanskrit word that you know we indians understand very well duty is a very 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 um, you know uh, inferior proxy to dharma because dharma has far more connotations than just duty so when you combine the concept of dharma with markets actually and the dharmic capitalism that is what can enable um, you know can enable um, you know ethical wealth wealth creation which is something that is really so those of you who go and work in the you know in the real world um, you know and and those who may actually do research what you recognize is there is absolutely nothing wrong in wealth creation you know a wealth creation is a very noble pursuit but it has to be you know it has to be ethical wealth wealth creation it has to be by you know doing what is called pareto optimal which is that you make money but at the same time you make money by you know by by catering to the needs for products and services of somebody who's actually not had these products and services one of the brilliant examples of this is microfinance um, you know microfinance which uh, provides loans to the needy um, and i before i took up this role for instance i was a board member on the you know on the member on the board of bandhan bank which is a very good you know illustration of ethical wealth creation by helping people you know give them giving them credit at 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 low interest rates um, compared to what a money lender would for instance uh, charge these where the interest rates are about 18 uh, 19% that's because the cost of serving such borrowers is typically larger um, but, but compared to the 200 300% interest rates that a money lender charges these are much much lower so in that process you know wealth is created and you know these society is served as well so overall you know what i want to emphasize to the entire uh, you know audience is to focus on ethical wealth creation which is what is the crying need for us um, and that is something that sits very well with our um, you know with our uh, uh, um, ancient heritage as well so um let me stop there and let me let me take questions um and um and and answer those so thank you sir thank you so much in fact we did share a link to all the participants for asking questions and there are several questions we have received most of them in fact some of them were in political in nature we have just sorted them out and we would be asking Questions which are uh, pertaining to your lecture. So I would request Swati Agarwal to ask questions, please. Yes, yeah, I don't want to. You know, I am an economist. I have nothing to do with politics. <laughs> right, sir. Right. Yeah, sir, we understand. Am I audible, sir? Yes. So, sir, the first question is from our professor Vinay Sharma, sir. He has two questions. The first question is that: Do we need to revisit the economic measurement criteria? Um. i i think i i would want some more details on the question you know in what's the context um, yes sir. i'll ask uh, vinay sharma sir can you please unmute yourself and elaborate on the question yeah good afternoon sir uh, good. thank you for addressing us and uh, you know the combination of invisible hand and uh, trust is is a very important element which you have elaborated upon so i just wanted to ask on that uh, the current measurement criteria for example gdp and the growth perspective and the parameters which you have been including in the uh, you know uh, measurement of everything 
so do we have to think or revisit uh, these elements of uh, measuring uh, the economic growth and uh, all those things so i you know i think your question is a very broad one let me answer it in some specific ways one see um, by the way there is actually somebody who's requested can you know saying can this session be a bilingual one i'm i'm very happy speaking in hindi as well um, so साहब का सवाल ये है कि जीडीपी ग्रो जो हम जिस 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 जो हम मेजर करते हैं वो सिर्फ जीडीपी ग्रो तो एक्चुअली उसमें कुछ खामियां हैं क्या उसमें उसको क्या हम उसका उसको उसको इंप्रूव इंप्रूव कर सकते हैं और किस तरह उसको और अच्छा और बेहतर बना सकते हैं तो ये सवाल है तो इसमें दो तीन मुद्दे हैं जिसमें मैं एक्चुअली रोशनी डालना चाहता हूँ एक तो ये कि जी अपने आप में शायद एक एक पूरक एक स्टेटिस्टिक नहीं है क्योंकि कई बार ऐसा भी होता है कि जीडीपी ग्रोथ तो हो रही है लेकिन सोसाइटी में जो है समाज में इनइक्वालिटी बढ़ रही है जो असमानता वो बढ़ रही है तो जीडीपी ग्रोथ के अलावा हमें जो असमानता की जो की जो आंकड़े होते हैं उन पर भी ध्यान देना चाहिए इसी तरह जीडीपी ग्रोथ के अलावा नौकरियां जो फॉर्मल सेक्टर में बन रही हैं उस पर भी ध्यान देना चाहिए क्योंकि जब नौकरियां बनती हैं फॉर्मल सेक्टर में तो उससे असमानता भी कम होती है और मैं 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 एक खड़ा उदा, उदाहरण हूं इसमें क्योंकि हमारे पिताजी हमारे पूरे कुल में पहले पहले ऐसे व्यक्ति थे जो कि फॉर्मल सेक्टर में जिन्होंने जिन्होंने काम किया इस हमसे हमारे पिताजी से पहले कभी किसी की किसी ने फॉर्मल सेक्टर में काम नहीं किया और चूंकि वो फॉर्मल सेक्टर में काम कर पाए इसलिए हमें वो शिक्षा दे पाए और जिसके जिस शिक्षा के कारण हमें देश की देश सेवा करने का एक ऐसा एक अवसर मिल रहा है तो ये एक उदाहरण है जिससे पता चलता है कि जब नौकरियां मिलती हैं फॉर्मल सेक्टर में तो उससे नहीं न तो वो उस उस परिवार का तो उद्धार हो ही जाता है लेकिन उसके चलते जो आपका आप, समाज है समाज का भी काफी काफी विकास होता है तो जीडीपी ग्रोथ के अलावा इनइक्वालिटी असमानता पे भी हमें ध्यान देना है और नौकरियां जो फॉर्मल सेक्टर में बन रही उसमें भी ध्यान देना है अब यदि साथ का सवाल यदि सिर्फ जीडीपी ग्रोथ पे था तो उस पर भी मैं ये कहना चाहूंगा कि जीडीपी भी जीडीपी ग्रोथ में भी कई बार जो इनफॉर्मल इकोनॉमी में जो गतिविधियां होती हैं उनको उनका उनकी उनका गन्ना करना जो है काफी मुश्किल हो जाता है जैसे आप आप रूर्की के बाहर जाएं तो शायद ऐसा होगा कि वहां पे कुछ ढाबे होंगे ढाबे में आप चाय पीते हैं या फिर आप आ, मसाला डोसा खाते हैं तो ये वैसे जो ढाबे होते हैं उन, उन, वो भी इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी करते हैं आर्थिक गतिविधियों को वो आर्थिक आर्थिक गतिविधियां करते हैं लेकिन वो जो आर्थिक गतिविधियां वो एक्चुअली हमारे जो जी कैलकुलेशन में उसमें आती नहीं है तो 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 इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर जो है जीडीपी ग्रोथ में जीडीपी में जीडीपी के के आंकलन में आता नहीं है ये एक बहुत बड़ा एक एक लिमिटेशन है लेकिन ये भारत में ही नहीं बाकी जगह बाकी जगह भी ऐसा ऐसा होता है सो आई हियर नाउ समबडी सेइंग दैट आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दैट मच हिंदी सो आई एक्चुअली से दिस इन इंग्लिश एज वेल दैट इन इन सम इन सब्सटेंस व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज अपार्ट फ्रॉम um gdp growth we also need to be focusing on inequality because uh, you know an an, an in, unequal society is a society that can actually be um, you know ke, ke, where, where there can be other social problems so apart from gdp growth we need to focus on inequality we also need to be focusing on on employment in the formal sector as i was saying um you know i i am a a, a good example of what A, a job in the formal sector can do my father was the first person in our family to have a job in the formal sector as it turned out you know i was the first person in my family to ever step into the confines of a college or university um, nobody ever before me even you know had could ever went to a college so um, and my my parents were able to provide for this only because my father had a job in the formal sector so uh, you know jobs in the formal sector create economic and social inclusion and thereby also uh, provide opportunities for reducing inequality so uh, these are two other measures that we should be following um, at the same time you know if there are the question was about some of the limitations of gdp itself 
I think it's quite apparent that some of the activities that may be happening in the informal sector, for instance, if you were to step out of the campus, Rutki University campus, you would find that there might be dhabas there where you may go and drink a tea, a cup of tea, or maybe have a masala dosa. You know, so those economic activities are really not captured in the in the calculation, and this is one significant limitation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Sir, the next question is from Professor Rajat Agrawal, sir. He wants to ask his question himself. Rajat Agrawal, sir, can you please unmute yourself? Thank you very much, sir. Swati for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it was wonderful to hear you that uh, you started from the Chanakya Kautilya Arthashastra and particularly mentioned about Purushartha Tatushta, Dharma Artha Kama Moksha. Uh, I particularly feel that this sequence is very important and unfortunately the sequence has changed. Uh, either Earth or Kama is coming first uh, and Dharma and Moksha is taking the last step. So that uh, sequence is one very important thing that we need to understand the importance of sequence. You particularly mentioned about uh, uh, enabling the market as one of the important factors to revive the economy and the trust is second. Now, in our case in India, government of India started earlier that Manrega type of schemes and now direct cash to the hands of the poor. Are these schemes related to enabling the market or the you can say the demand side of the economy so that uh, if cash is there in the hands of the people, they will be able to better, uh, you can say, create opportunities for the organizations. So how far you feel that taking money from the productive sector of the economy, because money will come from the productive sector, and then you are giving that money to, I will not take that name, but uh, to those people who require money for creation of uh, demand. So the productive sector will also not have money in the long run for their uh, further development and all other activities. So how long uh, you are able to uh, make, uh, say, a sense uh, with this type of uh, system? Um, uh, Professor Agarwal, thanks a lot. I think um, I quite agree with you that sequence is quite important as well. Dharma, Earth, um, um And I hope, Hello. you know, in, in your classes, you also uh, advocate for your students the importance of that sequence. Um, by the way, your, your second question is related to also another question that has come saying about, about how would the economy revive. revive. Um, there's one more um, comment somebody has made that the rural economy is doing very well. Now, urban economy is not doing that well. I think these are all uh, very valid, valid points. See, uh, let, let me you know take all these together and give one, one uh, you know, combined answer. Um, firstly, the rural economy has started to do well. You know, one of the key changes that the um, that the government has done is the APMC Act. You know, removing the APMC regulations, modif modifying it, uh, changing the Essential Commodities Act. See, uh, you know, in in India, till till the APMC Act was there, a farmer couldn't go and sell what he wanted. You know, to to wherever he wanted to sell. Um, he could only go and sell sell it in the Monday, and as a result, you know the local intermediary, who's called the Adatya, uh, would would basically end up benefiting at the cost of the farmer. So, apart from the fact that the that this year the crop is going to be a good one, and by, which by the way, you know we've had good crops, rice and wheat, over many years. Um, in fact, so much so that the surplus. Uh, huge surplus is getting built. But the reason rural economy has started to do well is because we've unleashed another example of, you know, governments basically not intervening so much and enabling markets. We've enabled agricultural markets, which is actually benefiting the, the rural economy. Now, let me come to you know, the specific question about demand um, and, you know, how is it important for reviving the economy? Uh, see, there are a couple of important points that must be remembered here. <clears throat> Firstly, um, you know, the, the COVID situation is, is similar to a war in many ways. Um, what happens in a war is that uh, you don't know when the war is going to end. And so no, not only households, but even firms typically will, will say that, you know, I may need, if I have some savings, that saving, I may need it for maybe 
for for future expenditures in the current case people may think that i may need it for healthcare expenditures what if i or some of my or in, or any of my family members become sick i may need this saving so instead of rather instead of going and buying maybe a car or maybe investing in a house uh, which i can wait for maybe once normal see returns i can possibly think about that i am not going to go and spend in buying let's say you know a car a washing machine a tele a, a maybe a, a 50 inch television or you know any of these durable goods so as a result what happens is because of the uncertainty prevailing you know consumption of durable goods goes down and this will go down you know go down in, even if cash transfers are made because what will happen is that cash will go and sit as saying chalo bhaiya isko main rakh leta hu you know mujhe zarurat par zarurat par sakta hai kal kal ko maan lo kisi ka kisi ki tabiyat ho kharab ho gayi to us mujhe us usme zarurat par sakta hai to isliye demand for durable durable goods you know indeed will remain uh, remain muted till the uncertainty you know uh, relating to covid persists and this actually research is also showing the same if you look at the united states you know where checks have been mailed to people uh, those checks have been used primarily for spending on essential items and, and in particular food now uh, india is different because india has uh, the public distribution system so instead of ma mailing checks to people we've actually given cereals directly you know we've given in kind uh, but in the us you know these checks have not been used for you know for durable goods so durable goods consumption has not increased at all it has just stayed, stayed the same in other words even when checks have been mailed to people that has not had an increase in demand for durable goods be precisely because of the uncertainty even in india you know if you look at the pmjdy balances the pradhan mantri janthan yojana balances they've increased by 8000 odd crores since lockdown began um, now these are people pmjdy accounts are accounts that are held by very poor people For among the poor people typically the propensity to save is very low so you know 100 rupees aata hai to kai baar wo pura 100 rupees wo kharch kar dete hain lekin in mein bhi jo pa pradhan mantri jandan yojana jo hai in mein bhi kareeb kareeb 500 rupees se unka account balance pm jdi balance jo hai badha hai iska matlab ye hai ki jo jo gareeb hai wo bhi kuch poonji bana ke rakhna chahte hain taki kal ko yadi zarurat pad jaye to wo uska istemal kar sake तो यदि आप पैसा दीजिएगा तो भी लोग ये यही सोचेंगे कि इसको मैं रख लेता हूं बैंक में डाल के रख लेता हूं क्योंकि कल को जरूरत पड़ जाएगी तो इससे डिमांड बढ़ेगी नहीं इसका मतलब ये है कि जब ये अनसर्टनिटी जो जो हेल्थ अनसर्टनिटी है ये जब अनसर्टनिटी जब कम कम हो जाएगा मान लीजिए वैक्सीन आ गया तो तब सही समय होगा डिमांड पुष्ट देने के लिए उससे पहले यदि डिमांड पुष्ट देंगे तो आप एक्चुअली आप आप अच्छा पैसा खर्चा करेंगे लेकिन उससे उससे आपकी जो 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 आप लाभ चाहते हैं डिमांड में वो नहीं आएगा तो ये ये बहुत ध्यान देने योग्य बात है ये सिर्फ मैं ही नहीं कह रहा था मैं एक्चुअली इसको करीब करीब मार्च महीने से मैं कह रहा हूँ अपने इंटरव्यूज में जोसेफ स्टीकलिट जो कि नोबल लॉरियट है और हमारे हमारे युग के बहुत बड़े अर्थशास्त्री हैं वो भी ये यही यही बात उन्होंने कहा है और कहा है बाकी देशों को को उनकी सीख भी लिए कि क्यों आप आप क्यों डिमांड पे कर रहे हैं क्योंकि इसका तो फायदा होगा नहीं क्योंकि लोग उसको लेके सिर्फ अपना पूंजी बना के रखेंगे तो ये मुद्दा बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है तो मतलब टू समराइज व्हाट आई वांट टू से इज दैट ऑफ कोर्स यू नो फॉर रिवाइविंग द इकोनॉमी डिमांड इज इंपॉर्टेंट um but supply side measures are also quite critical reform measures are quite critical india has is the only country that has done a bunch of reforms as part of the covid package to enable you know greater productivity in the economy and we've given a lot of liquidity so so that firms do not go bankrupt do not go uh, but demand actually at the right time will be when the uncertainty re relating to covid goes down there is no doubt in my mind that demand push is absolutely important you know it 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 has to be done but the timing getting the timing of that right is also quite critical so that the you know the money is well spent thank you sir sir this one, one more question, question. uh hello that is uh, that do you feel that uh, will there be a possibility india adopting concepts like gross uh, national happiness like bhutan has any professor any agarwal, remote possibility professor agarwal can i request you humbly to actually that we will have 
because I'm, I'm told there are 200 odd people. We should give others the opportunity also to, to ask questions. Yes, 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 sure, 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 sure. Okay. Sir, the next Thank you very much. Yes, sir. So the next question is from a student, Rakshat Kumar. He wants to know that in this time of pandemic and economy going down, how hell and our rating for agencies has grown, gone, uh, gone below as low as five, uh, minus Hello. five percent. So how will we we'll be able to achieve the target of five trillion dollar economy? Furthermore, how can we as a student can contribute towards it? See the um, this this year growth uh, you know is affected, but uh, because of the measures that have been taken you know um, by the government and some of the you know uh, demand side measures that we will take at the at the opportune moment, growth rates uh, of GDP can be much higher in subsequent years, and as a result we can make up for um, you know for 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 uh, this lull time. I mean, if if I use a parallel, you know um, those of you who who follow cricket will understand that when ball swing over you, there are a lot of uncertainties. So, you have to go left and play with your attention. But if you play with your attention, if you play with your attention, if you play with your attention, then you can play with your attention. So, we are also trying to make sure that we can play with your attention. Thank you, sir. Sir will be taking our last question. Sir, he wants to know that uh, it's a student, Krishna Kumar Kishan. He wants to know what is your take on PM proclamation of local to vocal and how would it affect our trade and economic relation with other countries? Yeah. Um, see, the this is basically, you know, related to the Atmanirbhar Bharat, uh, focusing on Atmanirbhar Bharat. Um, you know, it's important because what um, COVID, um, uh, COVID has highlighted is that we need to have domestic capabilities. Um, you know, there are times, as I was saying earlier, markets work very well 90 to 95 percent of the times, but there are 5 percent of the times, 10, 5 to 10 percent of the times when markets don't work. And it, th those are times like these when there's a pandemic or possibly there's a you know there's a, there's there's enemy action war etc markets may may not work very well and in that at that times having domestic capabilities especially in some strategic sectors is very important and that is what is is really critical um, but what is important and this is something which I've clarified before as well that Atmanirbharta cannot become a proxy or or, a, or an excuse for for us to be uncompetitive or for us to actually you know aid protectionism because you know i'm sure all of you are you know you're ve all very capable students who are studying at the university of, of Roorkee. Uh, you must have come to Roorkee by beating competition um, you know uh, it's like the the you know the, the way virus says in, in in the movie three idiots that um, you know if, if you remember the first scene he basically puts the application of all could not make it. Um, similarly, you all have made it to, uh, you know, to the University of Roorkee after beating a lot of competition, and that is why you are capable. In other words, you know, your capability is built, has been built through competition. Um, so, and you know, that is true for individuals, but it's true for companies, and it is true for the nation as well. That capabilities cannot be built without competition. If we were basically to say that, you know. Um, just to take, just to, just to do a thought experiment, if we had said that University of Rurki people will basically just admit, you know, people from Rurki, let's say, सारे जो Rurki के Rurki वाले हैं, उन्हीं को, you know, मौका मिलेगा. Rurki में शहर में जो रहते हैं, उन्हीं को मौका मिलेगा. That's an example of protectionism in some sense. So people from other cities will not be able to come. Then what you'll have is, as a result, you know, the not so capable will also get in, and that's what you know. Competition is really important. Therefore. To, be, to build capabilities and to you know develop capabilities as well so atmanirbharta cannot be built without capabilities and capabilities themselves cannot be built without competition let me take a couple of more questions akash um, middle class yes I, you know i myself from the middle class um, you know but but you know in our in our country we have to take care of the poor um, we have far more poor people 
and as you will know you know money unfortunately does not grow on trees there are you know governments also face budget constraints um Shubham Sharma saying um, migration. Yes, I think a couple of important steps that are being taken is one is the one nation, one ration card, because migrant workers are unable to access the PDS system. And as a result, they cannot get some of the essential items. Uh, once the one nation, one ration card becomes, uh, you know, becomes uh, active. It, then migrant workers can access actually the PDS shops as well, and that will remove a lot of their their vulnerability. The reason migrant workers, a lot of them actually, you know, move back now, move back is because of the vulnerability they face. This is something that will help uh, in that process. Um, there's a question about when whole nation do work 35, 365 days, 24/7. Countries does GDP does not raise significantly. Well, I don't think the whole nation nation works 365 days, 24 seven. We have leaves, etc. And lockdown um, economic activity could not happen because a lot of you know people were not going to factories. People were not you know couldn't travel to work. As a result, a lot of you know economic activity had to be shut down. Shut down. That's why the nation's GDP got affected because you know many economic activities couldn't be held. For just to give an example, you know take take Mumbai for instance. You know. In, in Mumbai, the local trains are the most important people. You know, a lot of people lay, live in the suburbs and they work, you know, downtown, they, they work in places like Nariman Point, you know, ba Bandra, etc. If, lo if the local train does not run, they cannot go and, you know, work in the, in the offices and factories, etc. If labor cannot come to factories or to offices, then obviously economic activity cannot happen. And that is why the, um, you know, the GDP got affected because of the lockdown. Um, Yes, privatization. You know, we. Uh, this is a question on privatization from Kashish. Um, so take a look at the chapter in, in the economic survey that we wrote called privatization and wealth creation. You know, uh, for want of time, I'm not able to answer your detailed question. But you know, take a look at that chapter. Um, sec, few more questions. Akash, I think I've covered that on middle class. Mansi Chaudhary's fall in the credit rating. Um, no, it'll, it's not. It, it's not going to affect at the funds availability of funds because you know we continue to be sovereign. Uh, we continue to be investment grade, and in fact, you know, um, a lot of funds have come in in the month of June because we continue to be investment grade. Uh, we have to ensure that we don't go below investment grade. Uh, you know, going forward. Um, so Shovik says that he's come across money lenders. Um, while lending at 200%. Um, you no, know, but here I must tell Shovik that the government has basically uh, the 3 lakh crore emergency credit, uh, of which about 1 lakh 15,000 crores has already been sanctioned, uh, is really, you know, uh, tailored towards MSMEs. Um, so about, you know, more than one third of the, of the, three, of the 3 lakh crore uh, credit has already been sanctioned. If you look at it, you know, just to give you a parallel in terms of uh, you know, again, use a cricket parallel. Uh, there are 50, 52 weeks in a in a in a year, and um, you know, let, let's let's suppose that 10 weeks were basically already lost because of the lockdown in April and May. Um, but you know, so, so in 50 weeks, if you have to do 300 lakh crore, that's a run rate of about 6,000 crore per per week. Um, and um, you know, we basically have done in the first few in, in this month, just the month of June. We've done one third. Uh, so, you know, there, if you look at it in terms of the run rate, I think run rate is very good. Yes, anecdotally, there may be some examples of uh, MSMEs having to borrow from money lenders, but overall, you know, a lot, lot of MSMEs have already gotten credit from banks. Um, abolishing income tax, and um, I think this is something which requires a lot of thought, you know. Um, there is this, there is this, you know, th theory called modern money theory, you know, which basically it says that the value of of money, you know, sovereign and sovereign money, basically, which is not tied to, you know, gold, etc., comes from requiring, you know, firms to firms and individuals paying taxes. So this is something which is actually a lot more involved, um, you know, um, and a lot macroeconomic implications need to be looked at.
I, I don't think any country has, has done away with income taxes, um, any large economy, so something that requires thought. Um, so Satyajit Ray says, do, do, is, is the problem in our economy one of demand, not supply? I agree with you right now that you know it is a demand side problem. So to Satyajit, I would basically say, um, read the first chapter in volume two of the economic survey, especially the second section, which is called, which is where we have looked at the slowdown in the economy, um, and what we are, you know, what we show there is that the, the the reason the demand problem happened itself traces back to the financial sector, the bad loans that happened, you know, that were given in 2014, 15, uh, 2014, 2013, 14, and that period, which basically created a lot of, you know, bad debt in the in the economy. Then the uh, and willful default, significant amount of willful default. Some of the investigation on these willful default then has created a lot of uh, brisk aversion as well in the banking sector, um, and that led to the, to the 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 banking sector problems brought down investment, thereby decrease in, in investment had an impact on growth with a three three to four year lag. That is what we show with the data. The impact of investment on growth is felt with a three to four year lag. Decline in growth then had an impact on consumption, you know, with a one with a one to two year lag. So it's really important to understand that at the macroeconomic level, level there are many linkages. So it started with the financial sector, you know, the loans drying up actually and bad debt building up, you know, um, impacted credit, which impacted investment. Investment that had that basically lower investment, you know, brought down growth. And then declining growth had an impact on on, sub, on on demand. So I agree with you that demand is a problem now, but the genesis of this is from the financial sector problems. So apart from addressing the demand, but you know, I will also refer back to what I was saying earlier about the uncertainty in the economy. So we will, you know, we will, uh, uh, we do recognize the need for a demand side push, but the timing is important. But the financial sector also fixing some of those issues is also important. Um, COVID says, you know, uh, well, uh, I don't know whether at, at a time like this, whether, you know, uh, uh, higher taxes is actually is, is a good idea. Um, Shashank has about development projects. Yes, I think I spoke about the infrastructure pipeline that takes care of your, your of this particular question. I hope my voice was not breaking now. Nikita says my voice is breaking. Um, do, were you all able to hear? Yes, sir. There was some issue in the in between, but it's fine now. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there are many, many more questions. Unfortunately, I can't take more of them. So, but thanks a lot for all your questions and your and for your patient listening. Yes, sir. We are still receiving the question, but we'll mail them to you, and you can answer them as per your convenience. Now, Fadi, thank you. No, I'll ask Shivangi Tripathi. No, I I can't promise that I'll be able to do that. Um, that's okay, sir. We understand. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I, Shivangi Tripathi, on behalf of Department of Management Studies, IIT Roorkee, and the entire college, extend my most sincere thanks to you, Dr. Subramaniam, sir, who has spared time from his busy schedule to grace the occasion and share his insights on the present economy and economy post-COVID era. You have given us a brief view on India's past, intercepted by Kautilya's Arthashastra, which strengthens the foundations of our economic development. Your take on significance of roles of ethics and trust in thrusting the country towards sustainability and economic empowerment has given us a definite direction for pluralistic progression. A thoughtful leadership like yours confirms to our beliefs that India will surely come out of any economic dilemma. We are also thankful to Professor Dr. A.K. Chaturvedi, sir, Director IIT Rudki, for being immensely supportive in initiation of Professor C.K. Prahlad lecture series. I would also like to thank Professor Dr. M.K. Barwa, sir, Head of Department of Management Studies, IIT Roorkee, who has been the backbone of this event and has consistently guided us to make it a success. We are also fortunate to be backed by a team of very dedicated and motivated students who have carried out their task with extreme professionalism. I also thank 
participants in showing their keen interest and enthusiasm and making the session interactive by posing thought provoking questions. Again, I would like to express my gratitude towards Dr. Subramaniam sir for being so congenial and honoring us with our, your presence. We look forward to more such informative sessions with you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you and wish you all good luck. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You, sir.